So you want to learn how to turn this famous Van Gogh painting into this? Well, in today's video, guys, I'm going to show you exactly how to create your own original masterpiece coming up. Hi again there guys, Emma here from Paint and Pino giving you some top tips for all things art and design. And for today's painting we've come to Kings Park to get our inspiration. Kings Park is a spectacular park in the city of Perth where you get some of the most amazing views over the city. So the idea today is to actually try and take a really famous painting such as the painting that Van Gogh has done. So this is the, uh, the painting we're using today is actually based on Van Gogh's Starry Nights and we're going to turn that in, or try and turn that into this Perth city skyscape. So the brushes we're using are just the size six and size 10 round head with the large 25 mil painter's brush. And then we're going with the black, the cool blue and the warm blue, cool yellow and the titanium white for our colors. So as always guys, this has been pre-primed so it enables us to blend the colors a little bit more quickly. I'm just going straight on with it now with the 25 mil painter's brush just to get the initial paint distributed. Obviously you can just neaten that up with the round head brush. But generally I find when you're using painter's brushes, the larger brushes, it really enables you to work much more quickly. You know, with everything we're doing here is just working in layers. So we're just going to sketch out the main design, as it were, that Van Gogh has used. Because at the end of the day, the way that this painting is going to look like the famous Starry Nights is through his iconic sky. So just by simply doing the layers here, it's going to speed up the entire process. You know, I'm looking to do a painting here in about 10-15 minutes. The Van Gogh painting would have taken God knows how long, but it wouldn't have taken 10 or 15 minutes. So the trick is if we just build the layers up, so again, I'm just giving a sense, almost sketching out where I want the design to go. So focusing on the, the moon that I've already painted in there, where the stars are gonna go. Now we're just putting in sort of the, the actual sky or the city line, which is actually, we've got some hills in Perth. So that's going to become, what's gonna form the basis of the hills in the background. And then we'll obviously do the cityscape detail towards the end. So everything right now is just with this large brush, purely for the sake of speed, and it really just helps to loosen up your own style as well. This painting we're doing today is a very stylized painting, so it's all about building up with layers. It's one of those things, it took me a long time to figure out as an artist that actually if you work with the concept of layers, so your background layer working gradually to your foreground, it just makes painting so much easier and it takes the pressure away as well. So I've just gone onto the uh, 10 mil round head brush now just to do a little bit more of that detail. So I'm just wanting to really pick out the lighter areas with the blue, so I've just mixed some white in with my, my cooler blue just to be a bit more subtle. Even though we're working in terms of background layers, I don't want the distribution of paint on that background to be too messy, because in a moment what we're going to do is we're actually going to add some small detail brush lines, like mark making lines. And if we have a really messy looking background, you're never gonna be able to fix up the effect. So I'm just trying to subtly blend those colors in a little bit more. Likewise with the bottom here. A lot of this we're gonna paint over in a moment anyway, but I still want to build up that base layer of color so that it makes the texture a lot easier when we come to distributing the smaller paint in a moment. Now this is really just to recreate the original painting that Van Gogh did. He had sort of a lighter, almost like a lighter cloud in the background just beyond uh, his landscape. So I'm just recreating that technique and then really just blending the two blues together now, adding a little bit more of that definition. So these swirls are very, very stylized. The Starry Nights, you know, it's a very impressionist painting. So although obviously it's at night time, it's just giving that essence of a glow that you get from the stars. So we're really having to exaggerate where those glowy stars are going to go, just by putting obviously the white detail in right now. A lot of people ask if I ever sketch my paintings out with a brush. I'll be honest, I used to. I used to spend hours trying to get the accuracy right. But over the years I've learned, actually, if you sketch with a brush and you make a mistake, it is just not a problem because you can always just paint over that mistake. What was it Bob Ross would say? 
no such thing as a mistake, just a happy accident. But it's so true, you know, that's the great thing with painting. It should be fun. You don't want to be pressured into doing the perfect painting. It's really just about experimenting with technique, mark making, trying new ideas. You know, this style that Van Gogh uses is completely and utterly removed from the style of art that I would ordinarily do. But it's really good fun to try and recreate those, uh, those paintings. Now, if you're wondering why I'm not painting his actual painting exactly, you know, of course we could just sit here and recreate what he did. I just think it's a lot of fun to make, make your own paintings and make them as original as possible. So what I like to try and do is take a famous painting, but turn it into something that's more of a, a relevant scene, perhaps somewhere that you live like I'm doing here with my own city skyline, or maybe just turn it into something that a scene that you want it to be but based on the artist's work so it's still original but it's just been heavily influenced by a different artist I just it's a really lovely way of working for me because I like to be inspired by artists without literally copying their work so I'm just going to put a little bit of definition now here with the, the hill line Perth very famously sits at the edge of the Swan River, but in the distance, we're not particularly undulating when it comes to hills and mountains, but we do have a whole set of Perth hills in the background that you can see just behind the city. So it kind of goes quite nicely for this background here that Van Gogh has. It really does double up as, as our hill background. So just using that 10 mil roundhead brush now, guys, just to blend some of those colors in. Like I say, this is the background we are going to be adding texture in a moment but I'm just building up some of the colour to get it a bit more accurate so some little flicks of yellow through here where the stars go just to really make them stand out from the blue a gorgeous contrasting colour just going to blend this yellow in a little bit more with the white so it's not quite as obvious you can actually start some of those mark makings. When I'm talking about mark makings, it's literally the impressionist style of recreating a palette knife technique, as it were. So just very distinct, sharp lines. But you don't want those marks to be too repetitive. You don't want them to look like a pattern. So the advantage to doing the background now, where we're just sketching out, in effect, the colours, means that hopefully when we come to this detail brush that I'm using now, we're going to be able to have a good idea of where those marks need to go because the technique now is to really put those marks but in the direction of the foreground as it were so I've got these circles I've got these these natural curvy lines my marks are going to follow that direction so the the actual stars the I guess you can call them clouds they are going to dictate the direction I'm putting my marks in it's almost like imagine it's like a swarm of ants just swarming around these little little fried eggs on my painting that's what we're doing we're recreating the direction of the marks if you don't do this it just doesn't have any sense of composition and it just becomes a little bit too chaotic I think a lot of people misinterpret impressionist painting or or loose style of painting like this as a messy way of painting it's actually quite the opposite it's like organized chaos where you're really thinking about where the marks go but you're trying to create that lovely loose style of painting so just adding a little bit more definition now here to the the swirly cloud stars I'm not really sure what to call them but just recreating that painting that, that Van Gogh has done and it just gives a bit more emphasis by having the darker blue or the the warmer blue marks just highlighting where those swirls actually go. So again, keeping that direction, it's so, so important that your lines are almost broken up lines, but copying the lines, as it were, the direction of the lines that we've already painted. Now this style is going to go on for a long time so I'm actually just going to fast forward the video for you guys. I've spent about another 10 minutes doing these marks so I'm just going to forward the video so you can see with those extra marks that I've been putting on just to fill you in. It's, it's a combination of the two blues so the warm blue, the cool blue and a hint of white so you're getting the contrast, the lighter blues, the darker blues but I'm trying to generally have the, the darker blues at the top of the painting 
and then they're getting slightly lighter as we get towards the hills. So I'm just putting some marks in now where the hill areas go. So a slightly different angle this time. We're going for more of a, a 45 degree regular angle just to differentiate between where the hills are and where the sky goes. Now when it comes to the buildings, it's so, so important that you don't over exaggerate the curvy line. So obviously rather than using the uh, the, the object as it were that, that Van Gogh has recreated, I'm trying to recreate the Perth skyline, but in his style. So quite a sketchy style, but if I had them too sweaty, they look like a cartoon. So I've just got to be wary that it's almost a straight line with kind of a kink but I don't want it to be a block black either because that's going to stand out too much against that lovely background. So what you'll notice here is I am still working onto the background which is wet because it's going to add some of those blue colours into the black and the white that I've already put onto the, the foreground. So I don't have any block colours in this guys. With impressionist painting you should always see the individual colours. So this is a sense of really having some hints of the black detail to make the building stand out but then I'm picking up those background colours of the white and the blue just to give a little bit more contrast with that building. So you can see here how I'm holding the brush, it really is like sketching. If you're doing a nice loose sketch with your pencil, that's the same technique that I'm doing with the paintbrush here. Really just putting in those areas now but again I don't want it to be a block colour so it's more grey coming through and then when we start to add some of the detail on later we're going to really emphasise the, the whites and the blues. Now at the bottom here I've just put a hint of yellow onto the brush. There's no blue on the brush actually but you still get a nice green effect and then just sketching out that top line. So this None of this is what I'm doing now is actually on the original Van Gogh painting, but this is me trying to recreate the Perth city skyscape. So this is the other side of the Swan River. So I, I don't want to be too specific. I'm just giving a hint of the other side of the of the river. There are buildings right on the other side, but of course you're not going to see them in an impressionist build, a painting. But we're just going to give hints of where those buildings would go. So you can see here what I mean by picking up some of that background paint so that you don't just have a flat colour of black. And I'm just going to put some highlights through. A little bit of light grey and blue. This is quite an unusual building, this one that I'm painting here in Perth. It's got a distinct feature. It's a relatively new building as well, but it's been voted the ugliest building in the city for the last five years. But I think people are starting to accept it as part of our city skyline might not be very aesthetically pleasing but it's a really super environmentally friendly building so I guess we can't complain but it's got this almost scaffolding type effect going on which is what I'm trying to recreate just using that white and the blue. It's really really important guys that you go for contrast when you do any painting so these little highlights like the lighter colours are really going to bring out that cityscape and just try and avoid even though it's an impressionist painting you don't want to be using flat colours, you want to be able to see that lovely range of colour that you're using. So these sort of white subtle hints that I'm just doing here, I'm really just building up that cityscape in the background. I think if I did it black all the way through it would be really overwhelming. So you can see when I've just zoomed in here that the, what I mean by the different types of colours. So this now I'm just putting in where the, we have a freeway that actually goes right through our city and then it just goes alongside the King's Park as well. So I'm just giving a suggestion of that using the white here. But again, if I think it's a bit a bit too overpowering, which at the moment it probably is, we can always just subtly turn that down with some different ranges of blues and blacks in a moment. It's all about variety, contrast, and just making sure that your marks have a lovely loose style to them as you're working, just to give that impressionistic feel. I'm just going to work into the, the river. So we're, again, because we're not now basing this on Van Gogh, it's just 
using his work as an inspiration. This is the actual city that we're drawing or we're painting now. We're trying to recreate the effect, so I need to get some of those marks that I've got in the sky, but putting them into the river as well. But I think it's important because it is water that we go with more of a horizontal feel. So I'm just doing a variation of some highlights with the white and then lowlights with the darker blue, just to give that sense of ripple effect going through. And likewise here with the, the city, this, the buildings go way, way back, but we don't want to do individual buildings because it will be too overpowering. So I'm just giving a hint of those, of that busyness in the background. And then just to finish off a little bit of detail, a little bit more sort of hint of trees where Kings Park is going. And there you have it, Van Gogh's Starry Night turned into the Perth Starry Night.